This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and welcome back to the channel. So recently, some Toms reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out one of his Mayhem boards. Of course I said yes. So I've got the board right here. You'll see a familiar face over here, the ESP32 cam, but then there's also a small NRF24 on here. Now, if you've seen any of my creations in the past, the Yeti board Mark 1 and Mark 2, you'll notice that I include an NRF24 on those boards. So the question is, what does an NRF24 do? So for the sake of my boards and the Mayhem board, the NRF24 is made for one specific thing, mouse jacking. So there's a very good reason why I've not done this yet on the channel. Mouse jacking is actually prohibitively difficult because obviously this is a huge security hazard. If you're actually able to capture someone's mouse, you can do anything you want with it. You can do code injection, which is what I am gonna show you later on today. But first, I had mentioned last week that Lily wanted to work with me to make a custom flipper skin. Well, it's all worked out and check out how freaking cool this is. This is the V3 version of the skin. It's got better coverage. It looks almost seamless. It has a logo that's a, another layer up to the sticker. I mean, there's so much thought, so much work put into this. It came out so good, I could not be happier. Now this is gonna be a limited run. So if you want one, definitely go grab one while they're still around. Otherwise, once they're gone, they're gone. All right, so this video has been a long time in the making and it was not easy, but it came out such a cool project. I'm so psyched. So buckle up, let's get at it. All right, so let's get right to it. Let's take a closer look at the Mayhem board. All right, so here we have our Mayhem board right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Do, 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 do. Let's, let's go faster than that. There we go. So this is the Mayhem board. It's got the ESP32 camera right there, which has an SD card on it as well, super useful. And then we have an NRF24, this little guy right here. So this is what we're gonna be using to do our mouse jacking. And this we've actually gone over before, but I'll give you a quick little run through on how this all works because it's still it's still really cool. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out here a little bit. Where are we at here? Do, 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 do. Uh, one more. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, it's so touchy. Good enough. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it into our flipper, our newly modded RGB flipper. So freaking cool. If you guys didn't catch the live stream on that one or the video, definitely check it out. Link in description. Well, actually link right up top if I remember to put it in there. So we'll just plug this right on in here. Doop doop. And then anytime I plug in, especially an ESP32, I like to restart it. Sometimes it will kind of brown out the SD card and that's bad. So let's get you nicely in frame here. So as we explained last time, um, this is basically an ESP32, but it's got a camera on it as well, which means there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff we can do. So let's go down to applications. I'm taking the long way. I'm gonna go to GPIO and we can load up our camera and show how that works. So this is ESP32, but we're actually gonna use the ESP32 cam camera. So we can do that way and it's gonna wait a second and there it is. And you can see it right there. You can see the basically the camera and the ring light set up. But yeah, pretty cool application. It's got a few different dithering sections or a few different dithering methods, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, it's a super cool app. So we'll back out of here. And then what's also cool about that is this has Marauder as well. So you can run this um, just like a normal ESP32. So it adds a lot of functionality. So for something like the Mayhem board, it really you know makes it a lot more functional. Gonna go ahead and back out of there. And then what else do we have? We have a motion detector, which is kind of cool. So you can just kind of like set this down somewhere, turn the motion detector on. And then as soon as something moves, you can hear it beeping, it's mad. So that's the motion detector. Whoop, oh, can we, there it is, whoop. Oh, I blew it up. All right, resetting after that thing freaked out because of the motion detector, we know it works. So we've got uh, Morris code flasher, the motion detector and the nanny cam. It's got a QR code reader. ESP cam with the Mayhem firmware, they've added a lot of really cool functionality to it. That's really, really cool. 
This actually comes off as just a 3D printed like pin protector, but you can plug this in the other way around and then you'll have a rear facing camera. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. I've already gone over the ESP32 cam, so we don't need to spend too much time on that. Now for the fun stuff. One of the reasons why I haven't done mouse jacking before is because you need a very specific device for it. I mean, obviously you need a mouse for it, but you need a mouse that has a, a wireless mouse that has a connecting dongle that's vulnerable. This has been patched over and over again. There are very, very few mice on the market that are actually vulnerable. I reached out to the depths of the internet, did my research, and I went ahead and went on Amazon. I've got two mice. This is an Amazon Basics mouse, and this is a Logitech M220 mouse. Both of these mice were said to be vulnerable. I was like, awesome, let's go. I scanned everything and they wouldn't show up. I couldn't get these two mice to work. Well, it turns out this Amazon Basics mouse was patched. So now it's no longer vulnerable. So goodbye to that one. This beautiful pink mouse right here is the M220. Now this mouse I know is supposedly vulnerable or at least the older versions of them. However, even when I plug this in, I couldn't get the unifying software to actually see it. The mouse will work, but Logitech's unifying receiver software that allows you to check the firmware wasn't seeing it. So I was running into a dead end. So this is where dumb luck comes in. Being my age and being a tech hoarder, I never throw anything out. Um, if I replace something, I typically just keep the old one in a box somewhere in a shelf, but I almost never throw anything out. In this case, it worked out in my benefit tremendously. Introducing this old ass, crusty, disgusting Logitech 350, K350. But this guy actually came with this guy. And if we look at the back of it here, you can see it says Logitech. It doesn't say Logi, it doesn't say anything like that. It says Logitech. And if you have one of these, there's a very good chance, especially if it's been sitting in a box, this guy is vulnerable and it's running vulnerable firmware. Sure enough, with some testing, it showed up and I was able to get the code injection to work with it. So I'm gonna show you the workflow for you to try it yourself. However, I do caution you, there's a really good chance this won't work for you. You need a very specific piece of hardware. There's um, Bastille Research has a link I can show you right, right down there um, that'll tell you which uh, devices are affected and which firmwares are affected. And it even says what the company said and what their kind of solution to their problem was. All right, so no more messing around. Let me show you how it works. And we're back down here. And then we're gonna see right here, this is my Logitech dongle right there and if you look really closely can i zoom in on this let's try this might be a little bit too much for zooming but yeah you can see the model number that's on there and yep it's got all those zeros and a seven at the end that's what we need to make this work so i'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in in just a second all right now that we're plugged in i'm gonna go ahead and go to gpio Go all the way down to the NRF24 sniff. Not scan, we want the sniff. So, do, 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 NRF sniffer. We're gonna go here, and I'm gonna actually change the sample time all the way down to 4,000. 4,000 seems to work pretty well for this, and yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that this came with this small NRF right here. I was actually having a lot of issues getting that to work. It doesn't have a really good range. So one of the nice things is these are very inexpensive model modules. You can get them and get them with a larger antenna. This is basically the one that I use for all my boards. So we're going to plug that in. And now we've got a lot more range on our NRF. So I'm actually going to pull up the desktop because what we'll do is open, uh, let's open notepad. So you can see kind of what's going on here. We're going to start our scan and then immediately, immediately start typing. Because if it's on channel one or two, it'll pick it up immediately. So all you have to do is keep typing. Now, if this was a, uh, a mouse um, that was connected to the receiver, all you'd have to do is keep moving the mouse. You don't have to keep continuously click it, I don't believe. But for this, we're just going to kind of keep typing. So... So let's keep trying this out for funsies. 
Now, last time I did this, I actually was going to restart the recording. So as soon as I pressed the key combo to actually stop the recording, it went off and it found our device. So I'm just going to kind of sit here and we're going to keep typing and eventually it's going to find the NRF or the NRF is going to find our keyboard. So there are 80 some odd channels it's going to go through. So we're on 15 right now. Now I've done this at much faster sample times down to like 500 milliseconds and literally just held the key and gotten it to work. But there it is right there. I was going to say, but this is a lot more reliable method. So right there we see our found address and it's one that's unique. So we're in. That's awesome. So now that we have our address found, we no longer need that old keyboard, so I can put that away and I can show you how all this stuff works from here because now it's the fun part. Now, if you do have a patched version of this dongle from Logitech, you can actually flash old firmware onto it. However, you do have to do it on Linux. The easiest way to do it is to live boot it. There's a whole process behind it. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it can be done. In this case, this just happened to be a really old piece of hardware, so it works no problem for me. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. We can go ahead and close this out. We don't need notepad, don't save. Nobody wants to save that. And then what we'll do is we're gonna go back out of here. Uh, long press, there we go. And then we're gonna go to the uh, NRF24 mouse jacker. Open that application. You're gonna see addresses.txt. So that's gonna load the address of the dongle that we just discovered. And then now it's gonna ask a ducky script to, to use as a payload. So of course, we're gonna use none other than I am Jacoby's YouTube tripwire because he makes the best payload. So here we go. Pop that up and you can see immediately that PowerShell script going off. Boom, boom, boom. So nice little one-liner. Now this is a cool little script that he made. So it doesn't seem to do anything, but as soon as I move the mouse, it's gonna automatically load and full screen one of his YouTube videos. This is his latest video. This is an absolutely amazing video where he shows how to use his payload or his one-liner in order to basically have ad-free YouTube. Super cool, link down below. Check out I am Jacoby, he is an absolute legend. Now obviously you could run all sorts of payloads, so we can close that and let's go find another ducky script. Now, this will just run any bad USB, so I can just go into our bad USB folder, and again, be really careful in here. If you wanna actually break your computer, this is the way you do it. Um, what else do we have in here? We do, 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 cookie stealer, demo. Let's do a Windows demo. And boom, boom, boom. It's gonna go ahead and open up Notepad, and yeah, it's gonna run the normal Flipper Zero, um, you know, the, the bad USB demo that it comes with. Super cool. So yeah, that's the basic workflow of how to get an NRF24 to sniff out a vulnerable USB dongle and then exploit it with code injection. I mean, obviously every single company that knew that they had a vulnerable device went out and patched it. So it's really hard to find these vulnerable devices still. I have to give so much credit to my friend Taco Cat. Now, she was one of the first people I've ever seen do this in the wild on her TikTok channel. Everybody go check her out and she's coming to YouTube. I'm so excited. Uh, but yeah, she was one of the first people that actually did that that I saw. Wasn't just me, almost 2 million other people viewed that video uh, just because of how cool of an idea mouse jacking is. But it took her weeks. She went thrift store shopping looking for mice. I mean, the amount of lucky I got to just own one of these dongles is absolutely insane. But if you happen to be a tech hoarder like me, maybe you have one of these. Definitely check out Bastille Research. They will have a whole list of everything that's vulnerable that they know of and see if you've got some hardware you can play with. But that's mouse jacking with the Mayhem board. You can use any NRF24 to do this. However, sometimes sent me the Mayhem board and it's super cool i'm so glad i have it thank you so much as always thank you so much for watching please subscribe we're at almost 10k subs right now we're at over half a million views i couldn't have done any of this without you thanks a lot we'll catch you on the next one